This is the first part of the two part video demo where we will learn about the IBM Optim Performance Manager, the version 4101 packaging and how to install the product. Optim Performance Manager is a performance analysis and tuning tool for managing DB2 systems by using a web interface. Optim Performance Manager can be deployed in two configuration options. Standalone option only captures monitoring information from DB2 data server. Extended Insight option offers extended monitoring of DB2 database as well as database applications. The first part of the demo will focus on the standalone configuration option. In the second part, we will go through the process of installing the Extended Insight feature. Before getting into the install process, let's quickly review the architecture of Optim Performance Manager. Key components of Optim Performance Manager include the repository server establishes connection to monitor DB2 databases and mainly uses database snapshot commands and DB2 event monitors to collect database performance data. The server stores this collected data in its repository database. The console server runs as an application in WebSphere application server environment and connects to Optim Performance Manager repository database. The console server also allows Optim Performance Manager users to use a web interface to retrieve this data and configure the monitoring behavior of Optim Performance Manager. There are other components such as Performance Expert Client which is used for features such as long-term trend report through the Performance Warehouse but we are not going to cover the installation of this component here. We will install the Optim Performance Manager server and then activate the license key for the server. There are two packages required for Optim Performance Manager. Optim Performance Manager server, this is the base product. Optim Performance Manager server activation kit, this is the license key activation for the Optim Performance Manager server. Depending on the supporting platforms and associated part numbers, there are different files after we unzip or untar them. In this example, we are showing the contents of these packages for the AIX platform where we are going to use for installation. There are few things that need to be prepared for installation on AIX. First, we should have DB2 installed on the machine before this installation because a repository database needs to be created in DB2 during the installation. If the server where Optim Performance Manager will be installed already has DB2 ESC 9.1 or later, we can use it. Otherwise, we can use the restricted use license of DB2 Enterprise Server Edition version 9.5 that's included with OPM. Second, root permission is required to install. Third, a DB2 user ID with sysadmin authority is needed before the installation so that the user ID can access the repository database and server. As we will use a graphical user interface for the installation, we need to have X Windows server software on the server and X client software on the windows to connect to the server. If the X Windows software is not available, the installer will use the command line mode. Now, let's walk through the installation process of Optim Performance Manager. Here is the list of files in the package for Optim Performance Manager server. To install Optim Performance Manager on AIX in GUI mode, we log on as root user and run the OPM server version 4101 install on AIX.bin to launch the installation wizard. The supported minimum level list of AIX is shown here. Make sure your operating system meets the requirements. Next, we can choose to install either the try and buy edition or a licensed edition. The try and buy edition is good for 60 days with the option to activate the license later. The license file OPM Enterprise Edition version 4101.opmlic is in the Optim Performance Manager Activation Toolkit. In this example, we choose to install the try and buy edition and save all the settings in a response file for future silent installations. 
Next, when choosing the installation directory, we must make sure that there is enough space available for the installation. About 700 megabytes is needed for Optim Performance Manager server and additional 1 gigabyte if we choose to install the WebSphere application server version that's included with Optim Performance Manager. Also make sure that enough free space is available in slash temp needed for the installation. The user in this case, root user, who installs Optim Performance Manager must have read, write and execute authorities on slash temp for Unix or c colon slash temp for Windows. Next, we choose advanced installation so that we can customize the names for the repository and its attributes such as database path, working directory and table space location. Next, we have the option to use an existing instance or let the installer create an instance for the Optim Performance Manager. If we are migrating from an existing Performance Expert version 3 installation to Optim Performance Manager version 4101, where the performance database of Performance Expert is used and updated to the Enhanced Database Schema for Optim Performance Manager, we would need to specify that DB2 instance here. It is recommended to use a separate instance specific for Optim Performance Manager. In this example, we use an existing DB2 instance which has been created in advance specifically for this Optim Performance Manager installation. Next, we specify a user name for Optim Performance Manager to use to create and access the repository database. This user must have sysadmin authority on the DB2 instance and also can run the WebSphere application server profile on which the Optim Performance Manager console server runs. Later, at Optim Performance Manager runtime, this user is used by Optim Performance Manager to connect to the repository database to access the collected data. In our example, we will use the DB2 instance owner as the user. The group name can be any operating system group, but it must exist in the DB2 instance. Optim Performance Manager grants the appropriate privileges to this group, so the users of this group can log on from Performance Expert Client to the Optim Performance Manager repository server. If we had selected an existing instance in earlier steps, the installer would detect all databases for that instance and list them here. We could either reuse the existing repository or if we wanted to migrate from Performance Expert, we could select the Performance Expert repository so that it will be automatically migrated during the install. For a new database instance, the default name for database is PerfDB. If PerfDB is already in use, PerfDB1 and so on is used up to PerfDB99. We can customize to provide a name for the repository database if we choose to do so. Database path is the directory for the repository database. By default, user home is used on Linux and Unix and on Windows, it's the directory where the product is installed. Make sure that there is enough disk space depending on the number of databases to be monitored. The working directory contains the log files and trace files stored by the repository server during runtime as well as some property files. The table space location is for the control tables that will store the performance data. We can either have the table space in the same directory as the repository or have it created in another directory. For optimum results, it's recommended to separate the table space location from the database directory. We can specify which type of table space Optim's performance manager should create. It is recommended to use the automatic storage type or database managed storage type for better performance. In this example, we select the automatic storage table space type and specify the storage paths to be used. We can add as many container paths and adjust the size as needed. If we need to add storage paths later, we can use the alter database command. Because WebSphere application server is required for running Optim Performance Manager console server, we can either install a new one packaged with the installer or choose an existing one from the list of WebSphere application server detected on the system by the installer. In this example, 
we choose to install a new copy of WebSphere application server and take the default installation directory. If we choose an existing WebSphere application server in the previous step, the installer would show the profiles detected here. We could either create a new profile or use an existing one. This profile includes all the files that the server processes in the runtime environment. Here, because we chose to create a new copy of WebSphere application server, in the last step we choose to create a new profile. In the WebSphere application server global security panel, we specify an administrative user to use to log on into the WebSphere application server administrative console for the profile if the global security is enabled. The installer turns on global security when it installs WebSphere application server. In this example, we will use the instance owner as the WebSphere application server administrative user. The pre-installation summary panel shows a summary of installation specifications for review. When the wizard reaches the product startup step, the installation has already finished. Here, we have the option to specify how the Optim Performance Manager server starts. In this example, we select to manually start Optim Performance Manager instead of starting it when the computer starts. Next, we see the message indicating that the Optim Performance Manager server was successfully installed along with the location for the installation directory and the install log file. The location of the install logs are different based on the server. Next, we choose to start IBM Optim Performance Manager and the associated WebSphere application server profile right now. The repository server and the associated WebSphere application server profile will be started or restarted if they are currently running. After Optim Performance Manager is started successfully, we can select to open the Optim Performance Manager web console. There are two URLs to access the Optim Performance web console. If the global security for the associated WebSphere application server profile is enabled, we can use either of the URLs. If we use the HTTP URL, we will be automatically redirected to the HTTPS URL. If the global security is disabled, we must use the HTTP URL. After installation, we can use the web console to configure user access, define the databases and connections, and monitor the performance of these databases. In this install example, we are not showing those steps and move on to the next step of activating the license for Optim Performance Manager server. The Optim Performance Manager activation toolkit for AIX contains the following files. OPM server 4101 activate on AIX bin, OPM enterprise edition version 4 1.0.1 .1 OPM LIC. To apply the license, first we log on as root and run OPM server version 4 1.0.1 .1 activate on AIX.bin. Choose the installation language and click OK. Accept the license agreement. Select the Optim Performance Manager installation directory detected by the installer. Review the pre-installation summary, click install. Click done when the installation is finished. Now that permanent license has been activated for the Optim Performance Manager server, let's restart the repository server to refresh the license. In case we need to restart WebSphere application server in the future, the stop and start commands are located in the directory shown here. The WebSphere application server log can be found in the directory shown here. To summarize, we have installed the Optim Performance Manager server and activated the license. For more information about installation of Optim Performance Manager, further deployment type or for more details about the install process, refer to the red book shown here. For more information about Optim Performance Manager product offerings and IBM InfoSphere Optim community, visit us on the website here.